Welcome to Safari Restaurant here in Minneapolis and I'm here to talk to Jamal Hanshi, chef extraordinaire Jamal Hanshi. Unlike Trump, when he visits Minnesota, every time he comes, he traffics in hate. We don't do that. We are more action-oriented community. We stand for each other, we speak for each other, and we come together in times of need. And that's exactly what I'm going to show. So when Trump comes to those little towns out in the north of Minnesota and he starts telling people, things that are not true we want to show the real minnesotans and what everyday impact they're having on people here in minneapolis and many other places hello everyone this is haji yusuf with minnesota wired welcome to minnesota experiences today i have a guest well i would like you guys to meet him let him walk in then i'm gonna officially let you guys know who i'm talking today i am talking to exterior chief Jamal Hanshi. Hanji. Welcome, my brother. <laughs> What's going on, man? Man, I'm excited, man. man. My hand is sanitized and I no, cleaned. I just I, came no, out of the kitchen. Same thing here. Same thing. I've been, I've been, man, you. That's what's up. That's what's up. I saw you do your thing, man. Hey, man, I appreciate it. And it's goodwill towards people, man. This is uh, what it's all about. Absolutely. I'm gonna have this great conversation with my brother. Absolutely. Uh, we call each other native Minnesotans because we've been here a long, long time. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. 26 years and still going. Wow. Man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we have a lot to talk about, man. Absolutely. But we'll try and uh, put it together as much as we can. Condense it. Man, um, you are one of the first. Well, I got Mr. Liban over there. Um, I want to ask you, man, mm. Chef Jamal Hanshi, Minnesota, New York, everywhere, you know, you are the one of the first Somali restaurants in Minneapolis. Mm, correct. First, what inspired you to be a restaurant tour? Yes, a businessman, being, being in the food world. <laughs> where is that inspiration coming from? That inspiration definitely arises from greetings everyone first and foremost. I'm happy to be here. I know we've been trying to make this moment happen for some time. And um, you know, I like to say that me and Haji, you know, we go back, right? Yes, sir. And go back further than both of our hairlines. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I gave up mine, I mean I just I hey, let it go, man. You know what? At the end of the day, this is part of the process we gotta do it, man. Absolutely, go absolutely, ahead. absolutely. I think that um, I'm definitely excited to be, you know, um, in your presence again and be able to have this um, awesome conversation. Um, to answer your question, I think that, you know, the food um, was a calling of, of, um, of many things. I think the first, um, I've had family members who were in the industry before I was, um, who had established um, the restaurant. So I was in high school when my family opened the Safari restaurant in downtown Minneapolis. Um, and I've just sort of been around that and um, you know my mother was making the breads she was making the chapatis and um, trained my brother how to do the Somali rice and the traditional way of how um, our family makes food um, and you know and just growing up around that um, but I had my own drive at the time you know I wanted you know I knew that I wanted to be around something creative and I've taken the food as um, you know, and I, you know, I've always cooked, you know, I've always kind of been around the food, but it wasn't a career until I became um, um, a part owner of the safari in downtown Minneapolis. And uh, from there on, it just became, you know, something that I have to improve and, um, you know, and then it came a time when, you know, in the beginning when we started safari, it was just to serve the community, you know mainly what we call the Scabro. Right, right. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a place people can have a connection with back home. Back home, Because that's how the food was made, right? Absolutely. It was a small place, small place. where people are uh, either rushing to work mm -hmm. or, you know... Or coming from work. Work. It was, it was, it was it, definitely it was, a hub. Um, you know, and Safari was that place. You know, um, it brought everyone from different professions together and it didn't matter what you did. If you were a cab driver, if you were a lawyer, a doctor, um, we all met there and have uh, our community 
some chats, have the tea, and converse. It was more than um, um, just a restaurant. You know? Authentic homemade Home. Somali food. food absolutely. That's what people were craving and for, and that that's the connection you created. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so it became evident that um, our food, everyone wanted to eat and try what we have going on here. So then we expanded our menu to offer to the American palates. So Jamal, the authentic Somali food, mm. the spices and how this thing it's put together. It's right. very unique. Can you a little bit explain why it's different? Like why like Somali what? cuisine mm. is, is a little bit... Why is it standing different yeah, from yes, other Yes, yes. Absolutely. Um, the idea of, you know, old school cooking authentic cooking you know and um, no shortcuts around it you know one of the main um, styles of Somali cooking is using fresh ingredients so that means you can't um, and there's no compromising around that yeah, that's, that's true because you do compromise that's you compromise the whole meal right there's no so using the whole spice it's a one main thing um, you know whole coriander whole um, cumin seeds whole black pepper um, um, cardamom you know and and you know you would use those spices and those traditional spices have been around us for thousands of years you know um, and Somalia was known in the historic times before America was established as the uh, cave of spices um, and those um, that was what we traded with the world mm -hmm. you know um, boats would or ships would come in from Asia Europe they would coast into Somalia particularly in the northern and, um, and you know do their trade there and Somalis were known to trade spices and Asia, you know, India and so on would come and bring their spices and we'd trade um, 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 goods of our own as well, you know, and um, so from that historic aspect, I think it later translated to being how um, each Somali family makes their food according to the spices that were native to their area, that region, that yes. region yes. or um, 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 that they were exposed to. So the stable, when you talk about Somali cuisine, the stable things, you know, is the flavors, right? And then right. from there on, uh, downwards, you know, every every culture has flatbreads, right. you know. Um, Somalis have, you know, we have multiple names for them. Um, we have Malawah, we have another, you know, or you might call it Lahoh, we have Anjero, we have Sabayet, we have uh, Mushmush, we have, you know, it's just, so we have all these breads. Um, each one, you know, move for, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's being accompanied by uh, a meat dish, you know, um, whether it's a stew, whether it's um, 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 roasted, whether it's um, stir fried, whether it's, fr you know, and you know, there's many, many methods that um, they all cut. Um, and, you know, the staple food in Somalia, I think, it, you know, as far as you know, when you talk about starches, I think you know rice is you know every culture. Of course, yes. Right, yes. but what makes Somali rice very different is the that's spice. what I want to talk to you about. <laughs> a lot of people don't know about this, man. Yeah. And I, there's a lot of debate. Even you Google the Somali rice, right? Mm -hmm. Even on YouTube, mm -hmm. there's a big debate, you know. And people really that have tried Somali rice are like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. have you tried the Somali rice?" Right? Yeah, absolutely. What makes it so special, man? Well, I think it's, it's different. Uh, very much so. I think is um, you know the main methods a lot of Somalis used to use the rice is um, we you would create it's a process for sure. So you would create the you know um, the broth of whatever meat that's going to be accompanying the um, if you're making chicken that day, if you're making uh, goat. Um, if you're making, you know, um, um, beef, if you're, you know, and this is from scratch, guys. From scratch, like, yeah. Yeah, there's fresh. no, you know. So, uh, go ahead. Sorry. So, you know, this, you know, the animal of that day will be, you know, brought in, slaughtered. It'll be fresh. You'll have, um, um, you'll use the um, the bony part of the goat and uh, make this broth, um, and then you would use that broth as the main um, um, base for. Um, um, the uh, um, for the rice, so you wouldn't use just a regular water, right? Yes. So in addition to that, um, the other process that Somalis add to the rice is first of all, you know, you you know start with ghee or um, 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 goat butter or you know, you know um, olive oil or any of basic oils. And then in addition to that, you have the um, 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 the fragrance, which is you know um, based garlics, onion. Um, 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 and then you would add the arfot, you know, um, um, which I call or yes. the, the, um, one another thing I use is 
the gear the masala right you know which is uh, what makes it different is uh, the toasting of right. the um, of, of the um, the seeds or the spice so you fry that with the onion and as soon as you have like a translucent onion you add the rice so this is the method why Somali right. rice is different yes is we fry our rice with the fragrance before pouring in the um, the, um, broth or the, the, the broth or the uh, um, um, into the rice so um, a lot of cultures don't do that so we would fry our rice get the fragrance and everything going and then the color of the rice will change to plain white so that means it's just like it's fried it's the spices are stuck stick, you know what I mean and infused like infused. everything is infused together in that process and then from like there the on, heat the like water the broth the and everything just so, comes together so then, <laughs> incredible and that's uh, that's I think the process of making the rice is what's different um, and, um, and it just it has to hit you on all the senses right you know what are some of our senses that we use our taste you know our tongue I mean um, sense of smell uh, you know what I mean um, and then you have to hear that you know like when you're frying you have to well moving on now we want to talk about um, what's different with Somali food now that we have been here so long I mean right. you've been 20 years been cooking right. you know you have restaurants you know mm -hmm. is there any infusion yeah. from the Western uh, you know you think it's gonna be the same. You think the they new are. born generation are gonna <laughs> stick to this? And so here's the here's the crazy what's part. the future like? So the future is like because we, we always are we gonna be like Chinese takeaways? You know where? I think go ahead. I you know just like you said actually I'm glad that you brought that up. So you know the Chinese cuisine originally started with you know serving authentic Chinese food and it's, which is very different. You know when you go to China the food you will have in China is very different from the Chinese food they have here. Um, and it's uh, it's you know it's a night and day the difference right. So, you know, over time, Chinese has been here far longer than us, in a couple of hundred years, you know, they were brought down here for the gold rush in California and so on. So there's dishes like the Kung Pao chicken, corn chicken, the chop suey, you know, all those dishes are American Chinese, you know, just like you have um, the Indian um, um, dishes from Britain, like um, tandoor, what do they call it? Um, chicken that, masala. Chicken tandoor, masala. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. So those, those are, yes. you know, the tandoori is like the way they've made it, but like, the methods of making it with this cream sauces and so on were born later in outside of the country itself but the influences are all right another thing that i really a lot of people in minnesota or minneapolis don't really know is about the somali tea mm. it hits differently and it's <laughs> different I, I, I'm, and I've, I've tried this experiment myself mm. my co-workers my friends mm. i've tried to introduce them to somali tea and every mm. time they have it they're like Ooh, why is isn't this in Starbucks yeah. you know I, yeah. I get all you know I get it you know mm. what I mean so because mm. we've grown doing this why is Somali tea different man it's courtesy of chef Hanshi yeah. mm. it's Somali spice mm. tea but well, go ahead bro the once again it comes down to the spices you know and the, um, the spices for food and spices for tea is different right? very different so there is five basic spices to Somali tea, you know, it's um, and then also the moderation of using the spices, you know, it's just like using the perfect amount, not over using it and not under using it, it's just like the perfect amount as well. Um, and whole spices again, cardamom, cinnamon sticks, fresh ginger, um, cloves, you know, and last and but not least, and definitely not least at all, is having to make anything you make with love. I mean? Yeah, this is because the intent of your food, whatever you make, you can have all the ingredients correct, right? I mean, you can have it all right, but you have to have that good intention of like, okay, this is going to be incredible. You put into it. It's a feeling. It's a. It's 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 a process of um, um, that's you know beyond just making spice tea, you know, it's, man, Somali tea, man. <laughs> and it's incredible. I think it's um, you know one thing is you know like number one selling beverage at one of the major things Starbucks or something is their chai iced chai chai this chai that but they're not using real ingredients no they're not you know what they it's use different. you know what they use they take it to the lab they want something that tastes like this so it's chemicals that are in that tea so when you look at their chai in the back they have this thing that they were pouring the, you know they call their chai tea or whatnot the plastic thing the plastic thing, thing. Yeah. it's a little carton yeah. so you look in it it's like 50 different things in there that you can't pronounce stabilizers flavoring this that that you know and it's uh, it's you know and it's, it's shit you know and you know how somebody how much somali chai a somali tea or somali spice tea costs just a dollar a dollar fifty dollar most. fifty at most yeah and it's uh it's something that the west has not caught on you know yet and i think by the time they do 
um, it'll, uh, it'll definitely, you know, and that's why your friends are being blown away by this, you know. Come see me and I'll take care of you. So, jump, here we go. There we go. Or use code Haji. Hashi. Oh. <laughs> Haji Hashi. Use two codes. <laughs> Haji it. Hashi. That's but Hashi more. Mm -hmm. You know, come see him say Hashi. And H A. Oh. Mm. You if know. It's, if it's your first time having a tea, definitely come see yes, him. Yes, come first time. Yes. Mm. Not a hey. If you're used you to having great tea. Don't come sneaking around mm. if you know. You're, especially <laughs> when you're from Africa, we know you. Um you know, so we all influence each other in that sense. When you talk of Somali food sort of um, um growing in the future right now, I, I do see that a lot of flavors have been because you know you take what's already yours and um you're able to combine it to the you know infuse it to um, western so for example some of the dishes we're making today we're making um like this chicken tenders that we were making um you know we were infusing with somali spices you know even though it is a traditional american um, um deep fried chicken or whatnot um, we're using um somali spices and the flavors as well um, you know, dishes that were born here that, you know, a lot of Somalis, uh, the chicken fantastic, was yes. born in safari. The KK yes. that's eaten globally now right. was it's born in safari. Everywhere and, uh, there's KK, by the way. Everywhere, internationally. You know, like, seriously, like, anywhere you go in the world today and you ask for KK, you get it. You get it. It wasn't like, though, before the Somali immigrants came no. to Minnesota. It wasn't no. there. Nobody knows it. Nobody knows what it was. Right? You're right. So it was born in downtown, and that was dishes that came as a result of like that quick serve me, you know, and um, it I'm didn't out. require and I'm out. So this was a dish that was being served to people who specifically were like um, 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 transportation, um, you know, cab drivers, taxi drivers, bus drivers, um, airport, you know, they're, they want something quick. People on the easy. go. Yeah, they, you the know, move. quick. And they just want the, you know, they don't want to be able to use this flatbread to dip, so, but they want to have the flatbread and the meat and everything as they would have it. So. <laughs> We would have, you know, the mufa when we make it. I, I used to see the traditional ways, like people have to mix it in with this. You know, you used to use your hand. Um, so we have to sort of um, 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 kind of remix those um, steps, few steps, and then voila, dishes are born, right? And and we all influence each other, like we said. You know what I mean? Somali cuisine is still growing. There's going to be a lot of other dishes that will come, um, and I'm I'm very certain of that. Food mm -hmm. brings people together. Mm -hmm. Food is a unifying thing. Mm -hmm. the different cultures, you want go to a foreign country, the first thing is food. You test, you feel it, you see the spice, you mm -hmm. see the cooking, you absolutely, know? Absolutely, absolutely. That's we're, my first, we're in, when I go into a very, any culture. Right. I, I, I enter through food. We're in a different <laughs> world now. Absolutely. And recently things have been really going crazy in this yeah, country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's because people are not eating together. It, that's the, <laughs> they're not there, they, right. you know, and I think they don't un you're focusing too much on, you know, they're focusing too much on, you know, what makes them different, you know? And I think that's where a problem is. It, like it's uh, when you look at, you're looking for something that differs you from that person, so you can say I don't like that, or they're not my culture. Or, you know, it's you know, um, say for example, the whole world is a pie, right? Right. So if I have my culture, it's like one piece of the pie, of this pie, right? So in order for me to taste what everyone else is, it's like I have to go around and taste this whole pie. Otherwise, I don't know food. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if people are, or you know, they, I'm not gonna say, uh, you know. Um, they stay on their own pie. How boring is that? All they know is their food, their burgers, their fries, their, you know, and then they're not exploring to the whole world. I mean, that's, it's like walking into a whole field of flowers and just seeing one kind of flower. It's like, I don't appreciate that. That's true. You know, I want you variety. You variety of flowers. I, I, want, I want something Spices. that's, you know, All this um, that'll just like, you know, it's, it's, it's shame on them if they choose to go that way. But I think what's happening for sure is people not eating together anymore. They're not having friends over. They're, they're not, not curious they're anymore. They're not, you know. And, like they um, used to be, you know, people used to. People are still curious. Yep, okay. um, but I think, you know, there's a lot of things that are out there trying to separate us from one another. So do you think Somali culture and Somali cuisine can bring can bring people to the table and we can Absolutely. open this we're, we're definitely one of those. One Especially of in Minnesota when you have somebody like Donald Trump coming and saying all these nasty things about mm -hmm. Our leadership says okay. nasty thing about our community yeah. that has been here, like Absolutely. you, success, Absolutely. you know, chef, mm. have restaurants, mm. multiple of, all the way to New York, Absolutely. Yeah, KK, think, all over the world. I think and that that comes from, um, you know, if I, you know, sadly, you know, and that's one of the um, negative things that we have to fight um, as people together, not only Somalis, but it's every human that lives in Minneapolis. We all, well, we are very, we're all, because yes. we're all in this boat yes, together, 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 right? Yes, yes. yes. Um, so. Um, I have to get to know my neighbor. I have to know what kind of food they cook. I have to know, you know, and this makes me comfortable knowing, you know, where they come from. And um, and I learned, uh, you know, on the way I learned a few things on the way about myself. Because when you learn a new culture, you know, you learn a piece of you as That's well. That's true. You know what I'm That's saying? True. 
So I think that we have to um, 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 fight back those things that are, you know, separating us. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we all we got, man, you know. And um, if we don't take care of one another and like whether it's, you know, um, you know, black, white, you know, um, um, and, you know, Somali, um, Asian, you know, everyone. We got to just, you know, um, um, do better than we, you know, we have been. Um, so the only way to counter this divisive actions that even our leader is, you know, um, 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 spouting hate um, is to come together and eat and have conversations you know learn a few words from other languages you know and um is you know it just makes you that uh, much better as a person you know and you learn more right um and I, you know I'm, I'm still growing um but i've been lucky enough to travel um you know around the world I've, you know and i've had um great people in my life that have you know contributed to what i know today and you know and you know i'm really grateful to you know the knowledge that they shared with me and, and opening their doors to me and um, eating with me, sharing these foods with me. Um, you know, it definitely expanded how I view the world. And, you know, and my purpose in life as an artist, as a chef, you know, as a person, as, a, you know, um, Jamal, is I see myself as a conduit, right? So the food and, you know, there's... You, you, know, you mean you are representing something? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, and I'm like a, a bridge, right? Yes. And, um, and you know, that's just uh, how I see it. I don't see it, my purpose to be consume and keep and grow my pockets. That is definitely not the way to live. Um, I know, man, you're big on Black Lives Matter. Mm. You're big on civil rights movements. Mm. You're big on changes. You've been here 20 years. Mm. You've seen how things are happening. You've seen police brutality. You read about it in Minneapolis, in the US, in mm. the world, mm. you know? You see how people get mistreated in, 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 in the justice mm. and the system and how it works mm. uh, to the disadvantage to a lot of people of color, mm. regardless, not only Somali, just mm. everyone, man. Absolutely. Why are we here still, man? I think that we're here to, you know, um, this is our country, first of all, as well. I'm an American, um, and, um, you know, this is the country that has given me home, and, you know, the only thing is I wasn't born here. But every other thing I'm identifying with this, uh, you know, with America, and this is my home. And, um, and if I'm going to be here forever, I want to make it right for the future generations. For your kids, for my kids. For my kids, exactly, for my... Um, and you know my nephews, you know, and um, and we all have a part to take, right? I mean, we see something that's wrong. I like to, you know, um, get behind and say this is wrong, and we're gonna, you know, because if I don't stand up right now, this will be affecting my daughter or my, the future generations as well. Um, I'm big on um, social justice, just you know, on on the aspect as well as um, um, human rights as well. Um, globally, I think that. Um, I see my purpose as also being active in those, you know, and um, making, you know, the best decision possible to um, apply to that and make sure that it's coming from somewhere, you know, close to my heart. Um, you know, as someone who grew up in Minneapolis, I've seen the injustices myself firsthand, right. you know. Um, I remember as a kid, um, we were, um, several of us, you know, we used to go to West Bank and play basketball there. Sometimes the basketball court would be really full and we'd go um, driving into other parks or other parts of Minneapolis and I remember this particular time um, it was four of us and um, we biked all the way to go play basketball in somewhere near the University of Minnesota and upon sundown or almost sundown we're you know we're all biking back to our you know houses and so on and as we were coming into I remember the U of M area police cars surrounded us out of nowhere. Get out of the car! You know, we were like 14, 15 year olds, you know? Wow. 14 year old uh, having an experience like and that. It, it was yes, very traumatic. traumatic, man. You know, have us on the floor, you know, put us all in uh, cuffs and, you know, separate us and put us all in different cars. You know, it was very traumatizing and, you know, um, you know, my friends were all crying and like it, it was a, uh, and then to add something or to, you know, they're coming to question us about where did we get our bikes from and all these other questions, you know? It's like, bikes, those are our bikes. And I, at the time, you know, I, I've always had a job. You know, one of my, you know, job at the time was um, I worked at a PPL um, after school. You know, um, you know, this, uh, there used to be a shop called the PPL General Store on Chicago and mm -hmm. Franklin. You know, that was my, um, at, you know, five days a week after I get out from school, come directly there, you know. And that's how I earned four dollars and twenty-five cents. So it took me a while to save for this bicycle. Get a bikes, you know. 
and they're like okay do you have a license I'm like no <laughs> I, I bought this bike from Target we can go there I'll show you where I bought it from and nope um, so they took our bikes they asked us for our licensing and this and this and um, and to make matters even worse um, once they took our bikes away from us they cited us for um, juvenile something something and just told us to walk home you know we all live really far away from you know and I will never forget that experience you know I came home and I told my mother I said hey the police took my bicycle they asked for a license I didn't know they were supposed to be a license and you know my mother right away just like any Somali mother was like um, right. you know? and I never forget that and every Somali mother would say that mm -hmm. you know every Somali mother would be like what are you doing you know what I mean it's yeah, just why, why a reaction they, they just let's go ahead so and then I went to court so we uh, got a paper sent out to my house uh, we went to court go see the um, public defender and you know or, or not a public defender at the time but I think it was the prosecutor we didn't even get to meet any lawyers it's my first time ever and that's you know he was like the uh, prosecutor was like okay so since it's first, Jamal's first time or something something um, and I'm telling him like look that was my bicycle I need my bike back you know and he's like you know you're in far more trouble than that so they're saying to us this time tampering with a vehicle I swear to God I didn't see these charges until we went to court tampering with a vehicle this this stemming from I have no idea right things came out I don't know I don't know and I'm telling well. you know like the translator is telling my mom like yeah vehicle and I'm like mom I swear to you Hoya we came from basketball we didn't stop at no vehicles I don't know what car they're talking about who's you know and and then the uh, prosecutor goes well, if you guys want to fight this case, you'll have to get a lawyer. You'll have to pay out of your pocket. It'll be very expensive for you guys and come back again. And then my mother was like, okay, um, what can you do? And he goes, okay, I'll give you guys a deal, which is um, this will fall out of Jamal's record, but he'll have to do um, uh, community hours of 40 hours. What does that mean? They said, oh, well, um, he'll be doing some community volunteering and cleaning and stuff like that and so on and so on. Mom said, okay, well, let's just take that because I don't want to come back to court and we don't have money for a lawyer. And then, so that's what I t you know they gave that to me so I this is the thing I will never forget I will never forgive the you know the Minneapolis prosecuting office of the police department ever in my life all right I am 14 years old okay and I was sent to a 14 years old new I mean almost I mean I mean the parents are new to the country facts. there is a language barrier, barrier facts. there is a you know uh, they don't know the law very mm -hmm. well they don't know what the process is Absolutely. and it's purely just taking advantage and knowing Absolutely. that this kid is a foreigner I mean almost maybe one or two of you could speak with mm -hmm. an accent I mean that's that's what it comes down to, I, mean, down it's to. Just, and I think and I think that if we were four white kids that would never not have happened problem. not even pulled over that's true the police would have drove by waved at us if anything speaking of that um, you know some of the injustices you know I know you have a no, young... No, actually, you know what they... I, I went, did the 40 hours shoveling snow. Okay, so this guy, like the, you know, they call it STS or some shit. You know, I've never talked about this, but this is, you know, one of the reasons that's in my heart that the injustices have to, you know, I'm about to curse, but like... <laughs> but it, it, it's it, fine, it's a cussing show, you know. Um, yeah, so it, <laughs> it, has to, it has to fucking absolutely stop. Right. And I think, um, I do not want to see the future generations going through the shit I went through, you know. Um, until today, today I am, you know, I... Um, uh, you know, I had a police officer come to my driveway. I'm standing in my driveway, just um, and asked me for my ID and what am I doing here? I live in the house. I'm in my own driveway. I'm like, officer, what seems to be the problem? He's like, yeah, well, we have somebody who looks like you has a warrant. I said, okay, well, I'd like to know that person's name. He says, no, let me see your ID. I said, no, I'd like to know that person. He said, you want to make this interesting? I said, no, you are making it interesting. Right. He calls his back up, and before things get, I'm like, you know what? Here's my ID. It's not worth it. Yeah, it's just it's not worth it. But I do not want to live in this uh, that, like, like that kind your, of country. For your children, my children, my, you know. I'm and my... so I have to do my part. You know, what I mean? right. so it's all of us that have to do their part. Everybody got to be you know? out there speaking and fighting absolutely, and absolutely. talking. And, and I, yeah, and yeah. you know, we have to do all our part. And I think absolutely. it's it's you know it affects us okay. um, definitely. And it's very traumatizing shit that I do not want any. Well, I know just to go through briefly um, I know you have a daughter I have four kids mm -hmm. you know okay I just want to talk about this experience he was 14 years old I mm -hmm. got three boys and one girl that I, one girl that I'm raising right mm -hmm. and we as we parents carry we mm -hmm. parents of color carry a different kind of weight on our back absolutely and that weight is we're worried for our kids right uh, absolutely. Um, uh, you know when my kid becomes 15 14 13 can he go out and play basketball and get home safe 
This is in my mind. Yeah. Can my daughter go out to the Mall of America or go shopping somewhere? Without this is being. Without being, you know? Mm -hmm. This is back in my mind. Mm -hmm. Can any of my kids just go out and even buy a candy? Like, mm -hmm. just go out to a shop somewhere mm -hmm. close and buy. This is the difference between us and the white parents of our age. Mm -hmm. We worry for our kids. So we Absolutely. are really stressed. We are, have mm -hmm. trauma that is different from mm -hmm. The, the majority white, mm -hmm. you know, and that is the reality and this is what we, some of the oh, things we're talking, we're about, talking about, you know absolutely. what I mean? It's really uh, been ap uh, affecting us and, and that's all we want. That's why we're screaming. Mm -hmm. We want change and we that's all change. we're looking absolutely. for. Definitely. So I think is how do we go about this change, right? I think it comes down to all of us to say, yeah, we realize there needs to be change and we're going to change. But people are divided over, you know, wanting to keep some of that and those people do not have the interest of the masses or everyone. You know, so because if you're thinking of just advancing one race, which is true, the justice system in America works for the majority white, majority white. white right? Because I like it was quote, meant for them. Yeah, to well, protect I remember, them. I remember the to quote, uh, to keep the status quo, to absolutely. keep them in a higher yeah. higher a hierarchy than anybody else, to absolutely. keep everybody else down. Absolutely. One of my favorite quotes, right, from um, uh, a comedian. Comedians tell the truth because they have us. You know, they see things. They're very intelligent. Very intelligent. They know. He said. He said the justice system works for um, if you have the complexion um, for the protection of the collection. Right? So you have to have the right complexion, you know what I'm saying, of the um, 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 for the protection of the collection. And just hit it right on the nail. I mean, that's just simply it. So a justice system does not serve equally to all of us. If you're black, Forget about it. You know what I mean? It's not going to be fair to you. Just like we see right now with Brianna Taylor. Yeah, so it's a what? continuous yeah. fight. And I think so long as I'm on this earth, I would yeah. never watch another human being suffer or, 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 or being oppressed. And just set it aside and say, okay, as long as it's not me. That's not, that's that's not, not the way, the way I want it. It never works that way. It never, it never works. Works. This so is a collective punishment. It's man. a collective I mean, and it's, I think it's, a, it's everybody who's different that is not white, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, you know we have to get our, you know, um, you know, even our close friends who are white, we have to get them on board so they can get, you know, so it's all of us. We are not um, separate from one another. You know what I mean? Don't just come in, understand, learn, research, find out, mm -hmm. you know, the history of this. Where mm -hmm. did this come from? Well, yeah. For all of you that really don't have, I mean, you know, uh, whites, like the white, supreme, white history is right, only yes, 800 yeah, years old, yes, 500 years yes. old. So it's very, so very, it's very So go it's back and read. Very, and if you want to know about this this if you want to know yeah. more i i read a book by angela davis mm. it's called policing the black man google it check it out read and you understand where the idea of policing mm. in america came out and how it came about it's absolutely. scary it was right. really scary and it's still scary yeah, absolutely man. absolutely really. it's very scary and i think right now so what i do is i bought cameras all right i have cameras for my car those cameras are solely to protect myself from police not no one else not to protect my car from being stolen or not burglars to, or, or thieves, burglars or, or, thieves, or, thieves, or people or you know just I mean? being, yeah. I'm from South Minneapolis, but I've, I've spent my whole, like, you know what I mean, a uh, 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 um, great percentage of my life out here, you know? And, um, you know, and yeah, I just have cameras specifically to protect myself. The world is, now everything is and, being documented. And the world we talk about, what's going on. So a lot of people are confused about defunding the police. What do they mean by that? Right. Why are they, t you know, violence are going to go up. You know, that we have to understand first and foremost, you know, when you say defunding the police, it's defunding police that are not living in Minneapolis. If you're not living in a community, you cannot police a community you, you do not live in. You cannot. You, cause you <laughs> do you know, like when you go into the suburbs and stuff, right? Yes. They have their own policing. They, the police have to live with them. They live in that community. In the community. They know each other. They know each Very other. Very well. So when they see a kid around the block, hey, go home. Or yes. you're doing something, they right. know his parents or they know his uncle or, you know. There's a connection. And I think and they probably is, went to the same school and high school and college and university together way back to their great grandfathers. Because yeah. you know, they come from the same neighborhood. So Minneapolis, we all live in the same neighborhood. I know like you know a lot of Minneapolis South Minneapolis residents and like you know uh, business owners and so on and we need to have our own police officers that live and come from South Minneapolis that come from North Minneapolis that come from you know whereas Minneapolis now they are advised to live outside of Minneapolis you know because it's uh, uh um, that's what they're all doing and um, I have don't get me wrong I love I have a couple of my own personal friends you know I mean? or brothers that I know are some my own that I know that yes. they're they're my own brothers you get what I'm saying I love those brothers I think you know they're from Minneapolis they know how to police they they are from there's a you know they live within the city I, I've done they're I've from done. here yes I'm, I'm, you know I'm, what I mean the other day I was and their at, policing style is different right I, I the other day I'll give them. you an example mm. the other day I was at um, at an event here on uh, uh, Stephen Park mm. 
um, and there was a mental uh, education or drug uh, opioid crisis that education that was going on. There was yeah. a lot of people there, and most of the and in that audience were police officers. Mm -hmm. And my son was curious about the cop car, mm -hmm. and he and I took him over because I saw a Somali cop car, and they walked to the car, and he explained to him, and and if my son really felt comfortable. Just be honest, you know, conversing with somebody. Because you see that, someone, yeah, like, somebody you that can looks like you know, exactly. You know, and that's, so that's all we're saying, right? Because we, this is our art. I pay taxes, right? You know what I mean? Well, we're not living for free, by the we're way. Not living for and free. we don't get free stuff. I don't get no free stuff. I've never gotten <laughs> never, free stuff. Never, ever. I've never yet. gotten free stuff. Right. You know what I mean? I worked for everything I got, right? Everything, uh, you know, through hard work, through education, through you know what I mean? Um, so there's nothing called like you know a free handout, right? I mean that's that's a, a that's a propaganda from the you know um, and then we're not and the just, people that want to go ahead though so you know uh, some of us are doing two jobs three you know and um, it's you know that's the that's the realistic part you know that you know we have to um, um, come to realize I think you know uh, more focus on community policing I think that will go really far it'll change you know how the like, relationship we have with our um, um, you know this guy's work for us you know what I mean. The police are supposed to come to the community and say, hey, when there's something, there's a trouble happening, please come talk to this person or handle the situation or something of that nature, right? It's completely reversed. This police are not here. They're military. You know That's what I mean? That's true. These guys have tanks. You know what I'm saying? They're not here to protect nobody but to take us out. So I, I, I like I said, it's like, you know, if we have, like the seven or eight brothers that I know that are in the police department live within Minneapolis, man. And I grew up with these guys, right? I went, some of them I worked with, some of my, you know, and um, they, you know, and their style of policing is so different, man. It's, it's gentle. It's love. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, and I'm, I get excited when, and, I, when, and, I, when and, I see. You know what I mean? And you, when you open up this space for the officers and the community where they have a connection, connection, yeah. Things don't happen at all. They, I have grown in a in a world where I where everybody knew everybody and we knew the cops. The cops, yeah. And if you knew his auntie, and, you knew where he was. Yes, because you know? when I was young, I, I I was in one block of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And there was one cop and he would come around and say, if anything happens in this area, I know who I'm going to come for. So he knew, mm -hmm. you know, like the community that, and he would, uh, he, and before he, he arrest anybody, he would go to our parents first and say, hey, you, you your son, mm -hmm. next time, or you know what I mean? Like, it's, this, that's what this I, is that's, what I'm talking about. That's what we're asking you know what for. I mean? When people say defund the police, it doesn't mean take all the money out right. and re get rid of all the Something police. different. Something, we just want something yes. different. We're asking for, you know, we're like, I'm willing to pay the same. I, I mean, I have no choice, right? I have to pay all these taxes, right? I have I pay properties, all this shit, right? So, I just, you know, I just want to believe into the system that I am, and I do not have that fake confidence right now, or um, 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 the way things are being run by, you know, individuals who don't give a fuck about us. Right. They gotta go, man. It's true. They really gotta go. They just, they, they, they just, they just, even the ones that we think are with us, they just make confusing the whole process and the situation and making it more worse. Yeah, so I think they. So they that's should. that's that's the thing that needs to be addressed more. We need to talk about that more. You know, right now they're talking about violence going up in Minneapolis, and you know, but why is those violence going up? So just look at the reason. Nothing changed. The only thing that changed is right now the police refused. We're still paying these guys. The police refused right now, right? But city of Minneapolis to protest, they're not gonna pull over any car. They're not doing any uh, uh, um, 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 stop um, uh, pullovers stops. or yes. any stops, any traffic stops at all. They're not doing any uh, response to community pleas, right? They're not. Um, they're parked up. You know, yesterday someone shared a video. Uh, a friend posted a picture. I gotta show you this guy to you. Police are posted up in at the parks and like you know uh, far ends of the city, industrial area, just lounging, joking with each other, playing cards. And getting paid. And getting paid. When they're supposed to be out here still policing. Or, you know, uh, um, um, driving down the streets and protecting it, you know? For sole reason why? They want to see the crimes go up so that we can say, okay, we need these fuckers. Fuck that. We didn't know what games you're up to. Just see what Baltimore. Remember what Baltimore, yes, what happened yes, to Baltimore? Yes, yes. Corrupt from the top down. Right, right. I'm 100% confident that the police here know where every crime is happening. They they do. They, they have know who, who's who. But when they want to find somebody, they find somebody. They, find they some have informants. They have people that yeah. they work with. They have a community. I mean, I mean, come on. You know, yeah. I mean, you're right. So, you're 100%, you know. So it's, uh, it's you know, it's, are they with us or are they for us? You know what I mean? They're not definitely for us at all. I do. I wholeheartedly believe that they're not, you know, they have some other agendas and it's not um, 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 in the good of. It's not, it's not, and I'm really, really, it's not something that they swore that they will go and protect this protect community. community. You swear about these things, you to know, and swearing is a big deal in any any place. When but you now say, I'm gonna do but, this, but it's you, a, even if you don't get paid, you know you're gonna do what you need to do. You do the right thing, man. absolutely. But it's uh, the, do the right thing. But the swearing right now is just a matter, it's just a shit that they do. It's not really, it doesn't have the same value. 
you know the most important um i would love to see more of um you know the police chief is you know he's he's he's, he's smart dude you know what i mean and this guy's from minneapolis i've known him for 20 years he used Aran, to come to my restaurant Aran, Aran, Aran mm. really really an awesome guy right but do you know Arredondo sued the city of minneapolis for racism and uh what was it uh, uh um 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 and um what was it um I can't remember. Sue the, is okay. Sue the, is, so he was so he we'll sued. Go, the, we'll get, we, we can share that. We can, okay, so he sued the city of Minneapolis for uh, discrimination and this other thing. So you know who he named on the discrimination? The person that's on there today as the uh, um, 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 director of the police. Um, 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 what do they call it? Um, the union, the police union. What's his uh, name? Bob Crow. Bob Crow. He personally named that individual and others. You know who were of the system. You know, and um, um, him, uh, Orlando, and several other brothers did not get just. You know, and I feel that Orlando, honestly, you know, I've known him for a very long time. And at that time, back then, he was like, "Listen, if you ever have troubles, you know, uh, any of that nature, you know what I mean? This is who you need to talk, contact us." And he made things happen back then, right? This is when we were in the restaurant in downtown Minneapolis. He used to come eat there regularly, right? Um, so I do believe that the you know the police chief, but I think the problem is the union. You know, are uh, the ones that have to hold the power because they're the ones that negotiate. You know, and that's where the fuckery is. You know what I'm saying? We want our police to be part of the community, Absolutely. from the community. We want them to play basketball with our kids, not harass our kids. Not harass our we kids. We want that's them to be mentors to our kids and be, and show and live in leadership. Minneapolis. And live in Minneapolis. Live in the community. Live in the police. community. We're not asking for much. We're asking for people that know each other and they, that you know call each other neighbor and their friends and they can really get along mm -hmm. and know about every kids and where everyone is. That's yeah. that's all we ask. We're yeah. not asking for. Absolutely. I want I want I want to see more familiar faces that I know in the right. police force. If right. I'm in South Minneapolis, that's I feel very comfortable and confident that we are they telling us South Minneapolis uh, produces the worst. You know what are they saying? Do this. You know. We have great people that come out of this uh, uh, South that Minneapolis. That this place North historic, America. historic, amazing. Yes, you know historic, what I mean. Yes, and they made um, history. They made history, and you know, um, so that 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 system has to be sort of. Um, so that's why I, I I fight for what I, you know the things I believe in, and I think it's my purpose to continue on doing that way. So food justice and social justice. It's a big deal. It's a big issue on me, and like it's, uh, it's something um, that you know means so much to me, and I think um, I'll continue fighting for that um, so long as I'm alive. The other part is the food justice, you know. <laughs> food justice is uh, is a big deal to me as well because not a lot of people have access to fresh food. Right. Not a lot of people have access to any good food, you know. Organic, um, organic fresh. fresh, locally grown. Yeah. And I think specifically those things were put intentionally to, like this grocery shop is, and you know, there's legal things that were put in place for us not to have fresh food. You know, for example, gardening should be. Right. It should be you know, available so we can get we can yeah. grow our own food, our own and food naturally but not do you get citations if you garden you know if you do yeah. gardening in your front lawn and stuff you need to keep it turf grass you know um, and turf grass is also I, it's pointless why the fuck do everybody have the, grass and, on the what is and it water what, and water them do you know how much bees and how much other insects you can you can grow and mm. help the the why? environment by just having this some of these farms in a backyard yeah. or in, in neighborhoods so just the, growing. Not so I, th I think I, my belief is turf grass that you see in front of lawns, that's also a form of white supremacy. You know what I mean? This was told to me by a friend, and she blew my mind. Maria, if you're hearing this, you know I think she said it best. She's like, yeah, that's it's a it's a white supremacy because it it serves no purpose, takes all this water, and you have to keep it green. Doesn't make sense, man. To a point where even if your grass is not green, they have a paint that you have to keep it green. It's terrible. It's a it's a horrible shit. So those things will take. Lifetime to change, but we can grow. We can use the same amount of water to grow our garden, grow tomatoes, everything that we need. That's true. It's there. So, chef, extraordinary, Jamal just, Hashi. Just, just ordinary. <laughs> extraordinary, chef. So yeah, follow me on um, Instagram. Um, if I'm you're gonna a, share that Instagram. Yeah, I'm if gonna you, share. If you love music, follow me on SoundCloud. Cool Hand Hashi. I have amazing, amazing. I'll share product. that. I have a great selection of awesome music that I spend a lot of time on collecting. Personally, for my enjoyment, but for also for my peers and my people who love good music, you can definitely enjoy that. Um, definitely, and then follow me on my Facebook as well, Jamal Hashi or Chef, I'll share that. Chef Jamal Hashi as well. Is, uh, uh, I will share that. Absolutely, and I'll keep you posted on all the exciting things that are happening. And uh, we'll be on the same road, making this world a better place. Change. So, uh, where, 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 if somebody want to check out uh, your food, or where can we find you? 
uh, follow me because I'm, 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 I'm kind of all over, to okay. be honest with you right cool. now, because the restaurants are closed and uh, for COVID and stuff, temporarily closed. Okay. But I do, food, I do feed community. I yes. do uh, community feeding. So I come anything out. you do that you're going to feed or going to cook or you're going to be somewhere, mm -hmm. you always post it. I, 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 I try to share. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So I try to, you know, uh, my purpose as a chef as well, if my restaurant is closed, I want to serve. I still want to cook for people. I want to serve the community. I want to serve anyone that's hungry that's coming to, you know. So I'm not here for, you know, definitely not the money, you know. I'm here for a greater purpose, and um, and that is um, um, that we all move forward, and you know any part that we can do, we leave amazing legacies, um, and that you know we're you know happier together. You know what I mean? So, That's lovely. I like one quote Woo! that one of our um, um, elder senator used to say. You know, Marka um, Wanagwada you know, like this is Senator Paul uh, Wellstone. Right. He said, "When we do good, we all do good." good. 